Hi, everybody. Well, this is exciting. We are talking with Pastor Eli and Kelly from Omaha, Nebraska. Great to have you on board, guys. Yes, we Looking are happy forward to, to be it. here. Yeah. This, uh, this podcast, C3 Church Global Podcast, is about all things leadership and church and local church, which we are trying to help people who are leading local churches travel through all the different seasons that you encounter. And you guys have come through one of the most troubling encounters, I guess, or troubling seasons when a leader has stumbled and there's been a, a falling away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there are those people who have been really uh, following him mm-hmm. and, and them. And they have also questioned your leadership coming in to take it over. Now you've been leading for two years. Tell us how you've managed to uh, keep leading through that situation. Well, I would say first, at least for me, um, what I felt God called us to at least wasn't depending upon another person. We were going off the conviction of what the Holy Spirit was telling us, whether through our city or for us personally. And so regardless, like times will change, seasons will change, people will come and go. And I have to have my foundation built off of what God has spoken to me, not necessarily if someone else is willing to be there with Mm -hmm. me or not. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned that it was really like a shaking and a testing that we had to go through that what did we really say yes to? Prior to the actual event. So prior to... True, that was, yeah. That happened for us personally, intimately, where that conviction really was formed around the idea of like why we are doing what we were doing and what we were doing. And that was building the local church. And so when this event happened and there was really this, you know, shaking and, and just this massive fumble that had so much to it, um, we were resolute. We stood up in front of the congregation and said, God is still moving. Um, Mm -hmm. it's heartbreaking. It's hard. Um, we don't know. And we are honest too. Like, we don't know what's before us right now, but what we are committing to and what we are saying is that we will still stand in the gap on behalf of Omaha. Right. And it's based on the fact that you heard a word from God. Yeah. Right. And and our commitment as a disciple, as followers, is that we'll do what the Lord tells us to mm-hmm. right. do. Okay, so let's uh, hover on that for a second. How do you hear the voice of God? What do you mean? When like- you say, God spoke to me. What Uh, happened? How did that happen? His hearing is so much different than my hearing. How do you hear that in your life? (laughs) So for me, the word really I was going off of was one that was over 12 years old. Oh. And it was something that happened when I was, there's different connections. It was like through a series of communication points, I felt like God was talking to me and then bam, I I felt like I heard the Holy Spirit clearly. And uh, it was during a prayer time and it was, I was, felt like I was given a word. I've always been told, hey, when God gives you a word, you've, Ask the Holy Spirit right away, hey, show me that in Scripture, Lord. And I had done that. Well, God had said, like, Deuteronomy chapter 38, and I opened up to Deuteronomy 38, and there is no Deuteronomy 38. <laughs> and, and so I was questioning. This was, in, in sequen- it was day two days in a row. I felt like the Lord gave me a specific word. And then the next day, he gave me the exact same word. And then he said, Hebrews 11. And then I started reading through Hebrews 11. And then right as I got through by faith, by faith, by faith, the Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart. By faith, Eli stood in the gap on behalf of Omaha, and it was a credit to him as righteousness. Hmm. And that was a turning point in my life because before that, we had friends that had moved away and they're, you know, hey, come move with us. You know, they're like, no, I feel like I'm supposed to be in Omaha. However Which ironically, long it's supposed the same to, people. <laughs> it's like, it's, it, it, was, it was the same people. And um, it is as resolute as I had to be, I've had times where that word has been tested and different opportunities and different things. And I don't know how long that season is, but unless God or until God, I'm not asking for a new word. If this is all God has stand in the gap on behalf of Oma, I'm going to stand to the fullest of my ability. So it's like through an impression Mm -hmm. that I get. And I usually line it up. I, I immediately go, God, show me that in scripture. And several times in my life where I've had impressions upon my heart, I've opened up and it's usually I get something like Luke 4, 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he you gets know? specific like scripture verses, mm-hmm. and, and it's I, I'm not that familiar with it, you know. But uh, Luke, Luke chapter four, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, mm-hmm. anoint me, and things like that, and and then um, there's just little things that the Holy Spirit will bring right. to me because right. of that. You know? Right? Mm-hmm. How do you hear, Kelly? Mine. So his seems to be more like 
prior to reading scripture. Mine's just through scripture. Like mm-hmm. I, I, the scripture will come alive in me mm-hmm. and um, it will be specific to something um, that might be going on in my life. And so, right. uh, so my, my discipline of reading scripture is very important right. because otherwise I'm, I'm not hearing and, and, you know, you can hear sermons and words mm-hmm. from people and you can receive, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. That does. Um, but it's, it's out of scripture that right. I'm, right. I'm given something. The, the unusual thing about God speaking to us is you would think that what he's telling you to do is going to, going to make life easy. Or t- <laughs> he's going to give you, he's going to tell you to do something that, is going to be better than if you'd chosen to do something else. But my experience is that there's nothing easy that comes with that, that yeah. direction. You yes. can confirm yeah. that. I can confirm yeah. that. I, and, and there's a scripture that says the word of the Lord tried him, and it's talking about Joseph. Mm-hmm. So he got a word that he's going to be a ruler, have a great leadership role, mm-hmm. but all hell breaks loose. After he's received that word, mm-hmm. several times, unjustly accused of rape, sold, nearly killed by his brothers, sold as a slave, down in the prison. I mean, drastic, dramatic events, and yet he had a word from God. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting how I think humanity, like, we'll read that and we'll think like, oh, okay. But when you're actually living it, it's a very different mm-hmm. understanding where, yeah, you're like, oh, the goodness of the Lord is going to follow me all the days of my life. Like <laughs> yes. I'm not, this is, it's a, it's a good decision and it is because it's obedient to him, but it's not good quote unquote to your feelings or to what you want to do or. Right. And so, so I just, I just think people need to, uh, we all need to understand that getting a word from God is essential mm-hmm. and you can stake your life on yes. it. Yes. Which you have. And you have to return to it. Right. Like awesome. there's been many times where I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. I said yes to this. Yes. And there's that persistence to you it. Open up the cover of your Bible. There it is. I know yes. what God told me. Yeah. Yeah. And you ha- and that's literally the only thing you have at times is like, okay, I know God told us to do this. So so even though it looks a- absolutely worse, like we had so many people at first say, hey, yeah, like this is great. Like we love you guys. And, and they were all, I believe, you know, good intentions. But then after a while that fades and they decide to leave and mm-hmm. they're like basically saying like mm-hmm. great decision for you, Bye. but not for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so right. peace out. Yeah. And, and you, you have to stay resolute to what God has asked you to do. Yeah. That's and, and that is what we're committed to do. I, I, what you just said is super important that when your emotions are a mess, Mm-hmm. And your mind is in turmoil mm-hmm. because of the pressure and the warfare and whatever's going on. To have an objective event in your in your journey mm-hmm. that says this is the right thing to do, mm-hmm. even though your feelings are a mess. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so prophecies mm-hmm. from other people on that journey can become really important. Paul said to Timothy, "War a good warfare by the prophecies." That you got from me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you're in the middle of a fight, you can reach out and say, "Yes, God did speak. Mm-hmm. There is something." Well, let me add just a little bit to that because we go through Joseph's life, and the Bible talks about how he remembered mm-hmm. when his brothers were bound down to him. He remembered, and I wonder if there is a point in your life where his idea was one of prominence. You're going to bow down to me. But when they bowed down to him, it wasn't because he was a ruler over them as much as it is he had an opportunity to serve them. Mm -hmm. I think some people get the idea of the dream that God has for you looks like prominence or looks like this and stardom and celebrity or, Mm -hmm. look, I'm going to be this one day. And God basically had him fulfilling his dream was him actually forgiving the very people that hurt him Mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people have the idea of what it looks like to walk in that purpose, that calling that they felt like God placed upon their heart, not realizing that it's actually going to be the death of them and everything that they have the right to hold on to. Mm-hmm. For them to walk into that, they got to be able to let it go. Oh, yeah. And if you're just standing on one mountaintop and you're looking at the other mountaintop, neglecting the between you and that point, right? Yeah. there's a lot of valleys and... 
I mean, God said, hey, I'm going to take you into your promised land. Yes. Uh, he didn't kind of mention this. What was in between. <laughs> all these giants yeah. and kings and yeah, yeah. deserts uh -huh. and trial. And so definitely don't be imagining that it's without some pain because actually the pain of the journey makes you into the kind of person who's going to fulfill Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that vision anyway. And so without it, we'll be ill-equipped for whatever God's got for us. And you guys have done such a magnificent job of rebuilding your church and your team. Mm -hmm. The team that I've been with this weekend, what a bunch of world-class people they are. Yeah. And, and yourselves have managed to bring the church out of debt Mm -hmm. into a, a plus situation, right? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so when we stepped in, the church was a little over $120,000 in debt. Uh, we had uh, about $8,000 in our checking account. That was, we were, as a board, I stepped in, we noticed that we only had about a few weeks left before we were going to be in the negative. Um, we were actually paying our bills with current vision builders coming in. We had vision builders set aside. We had about $50,000 in a vision builders account, but in addition to $120,000 of operational debt, different expenditures that we had beyond that. Um, and when I stepped in, obviously seeing that being a person who's frugal, like, I mean, we put all- We're we, very frugal. They're but also frugal, but less and generous. Less and like there, there's some things like that some people might not agree with. Like we paid off our house uh, completely and- um, Years ago, yeah. Years ago. Way before which, all of Like we were just like- Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But which is an interesting story, and I'll be, just be really quick. Like, I I knew that. So Eli was a business owner before he. Ha, we have a family business. They he does. I say we just because I'm married, <laughs> but and they still operating, doing really well. We were very frugal, but also he worked his butt off, mm -hmm. like in construction. They mm -hmm. built the business, and um. But I knew that at some point I didn't know that anything was going to happen, but I knew at some point we were going to take a step back financially. Mm -hmm. um, and so whether saving for the kids or the house and all this kind of stuff, like I knew we needed to put ourselves in a place that when something, when something was going to happen, we would be okay. Literally I, I'm saying like five years before COVID and before this and, and, and all this, all this kind of stuff, like that was like an impression. And so we were working really hard to do that. And so we had that ingrained in us, just this like, like not that we're like doomsday, like right. say, like, but it was like, no, there is something coming yeah. that we need to be prepared for. Let's have no doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so we we great. had that. Um, but so sorry, that personal on. lifestyle you put into the church and mm -hmm. got them out of debt. Yep. So we stepped in um, as interim initially and didn't take a salary from the church just as long as some things were getting worked out. And I said, hey, I basically gave like six months whatever the church, I'm not going to be on salary as long as some other things were being worked out. And during that time, I got to look at all the finances and I remember thinking, okay, God, how am I going to pay all this stuff off? I don't want the church to fold up, you know, which, you know, it could be debatable how to manage that stuff. And I'm like, God, I know there's a way that we can figure this out. Mm -hmm. Well, as we were getting ready for our Vision Builders Gala, which hadn't yet gotten set, I felt the Lord say so sternly to me, don't you dare pay off that debt with anything from vision builders, you pay it off with the tithe. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that. We were paying our bills with vision builders before that. And so I started putting every dime away of vision builders into a separate account. I said, I want you to open up a separate account and we're going to put vision builders in that and I won't touch it. Mm -hmm. And that's just level discipline. Like mm -hmm. put it where I don't see it. And that helps me be disciplined. I'm just not going to touch it. I don't want to know, even know how much is in there frequently. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while I'll ask and just see where we're at as we hit milestones. And then as vision builders came in, God just blew us away with people's generosity. Yeah, it's really generosity. a testament to the people's generosity. Absolutely. Um, and yes, to like our, you know, um, conversations about <laughs> what people are spending their money on yeah. and, and mm -hmm. just things that we are, you know, looking at the whole thing you know, dynamic of what we were doing for the church and everything and, and putting boundaries in place and right. talking to people about what their, you know, spending habits are and stuff like that. But it really is a testament to the generosity Absolutely. of our people sure. um, to, to, yeah, to really accomplish such, that. I mean, that's such a great story because your own personal commitments and budgeting and mm -hmm. way of handling your own finances has been reflected in, in your church leadership. So just uh, jumping on that thought for a second. Most people in the Western world today have not paid their mortgage off. 
have, you know, are living in a house that they owe mm. money on. Most people are in trouble in some area where they're overspending and under-earning or feeling the pressure of finances. And uh, there's a lot of uh, – and this isn't, this isn't just in the non-Christian world. A lot of Christians are yet to learn mm-hmm. how to actually manage finances so that they can – Live free, and I think it's sometimes we're we're encouraging people to reach out to God and believe He's going to supply all your need according right. to His riches and glory. Mm. But if we're not actually managing what we do have in a correct way, uh, it's going to it's slip through our happen. fingers. Yeah, yeah, right. So or talk to us about some of the know. basics of budgeting, of <laughs> keeping your financial life together. I'm smiling because I'm like, all right, and I love, I love this. Well, at first, it's not living beyond your means, right? So you ha- can't live in comparison. I remember four years ago, I looked at Kelly and I said, you know, I could buy my dream car right now, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Well, I mean, I got four kids, so that would be stupid to buy it because it's, it's, I'm going to want to bring my kids in there and it's, it's they're not going to trash it. Well, not necessarily trash <laughs> I mean, it. I mean, they're good kids. They, they bring the they bikes things, around. They're yeah. constantly hitting my car with their bikes. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I did not buy that car then. Right. <laughs> right? But I, I look at it back. I'm like, man, that would have been such a stupid financial decision. Yeah. Rather than making my money work for me, mm-hmm. right? So it, there's certain people that you have to be able to live, you don't live beyond your means. There's certain things that you have to be able to say no to. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much you want to go eat out at a, a nicer restaurant. Or go on vacation. We went or... and we ate at a restaurant. This was when we first got married. I'm like, I'm going to take her out to a fancy restaurant. And it was like a la carte, everything. It was, a, it was cheap. It's expensive back then. But nowadays it's like, oh, that's not too bad. But it was $50 for a steak. Mm-hmm. And I'm used to eating like, you know, $15 steak, you know, yeah. you go to Longhorn Steakhouse and it ended up being like $175 bill for us too, right. just to eat. And I remember thinking, I would rather eat at Qdoba 17 times <laughs> than to have this. Now, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with having a nice meal here and there. But, but- for us, it was like, never again. Like yeah. it's, it's, and he says living beyond your means. My perspective would be, you actually don't need that much. That's, like yeah. if you, like your wants and your needs are actually like not as intertwined as you mm. think they are. Your right. needs yeah. is like a basic meal right. that you can go get or you can go make, get to right. the grocery. Like, and so it's, it's it, and, and for me, perspectively, like I feel like that's self-control. Right. Like, yes. yeah, of course I, I want nicer things or extravagant things, but what is my season right now? We were a growing family. Right. We knew we were having more children. Like I want to prepare and plan for what I want in my future. And that's mm-hmm. not obviously been a conversation that we've always had. Right. Like we've had conversations about our finances as far as like, okay, do I want the cool new gadget right now? Or do I want the life that I want to live when I'm 50? Mm-hmm. And so having a future mindset, a, a direction, like mm-hmm. we were just even talking about like a little go, a little bit ago, having an idea of what you're, what you want for your future. And then, disciplining yourself to those things. Like, right. do you want to be 65 and half fa- having to work because you didn't mm-hmm. put anything to retirement and right. your, your expenses are so outrageous? Like, mm-hmm. no, like most people are retiring. Like, no, you want to like live mm-hmm. a different life. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't, I think they're so uh, either confused, mm-hmm. which there's resources out there. I don't take that as an excuse. Like there's so many resources. Yeah. Dave Ramsey, like other financial things. Yeah. There's so many resources out there um, for people to learn better money management. Um, I think people are also like distracted. Right. Like the pole of culture in the world is so distracting that you get your, it's shiny, it's sparkly. So yeah, you're yeah. going to stare yeah. at it. Like and you can just order it online. Yes, and, and it's so easy doorstep. to get, mm-hmm. like you can click a, a link and Boom. there goes $75. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Oh, there just goes seventy five dollars. No big deal. No, that that actually is a big deal, well, which is the, funny. Well, because I look at it that way. I always say, "Is money is time." So, right. how long did it take you to work to get that? Now, some people think, "Well, you can't think hourly," which I agree with. If you think hourly, mm-hmm. well, I got to work. But there is a level of truth to that. Mm-hmm. How long? How much time did I have to commit? How many much sales did I have to do in order to get that? Because what you're doing is you're not exchanging a dollar for an item. You're exchanging your time, your, your life. life. Yeah. for a part. And mm-hmm. so, like even as a church, we got to be able to be disciplined so that we can get what we want to do. We want to get a building. Mm -hmm. And so we put away or saved up. We have over a million dollars right now in vision builders. We kind of came out of debt, $120,000. That's in just two years, right? In just two two, years. Yeah, just over two years. over $120 in debt and about Mm -hmm. $50,000 in vision vision builders. builders Now we're over a million Mm -hmm. right now. And we we just believe God's going to exceed that. But what is that? I know what we want. 
Yeah. And in order for us to get what we want tomorrow, mm -hmm. we got to say no to what we want today. Right. Yeah. And that's basically the foundation. Yeah. And so even personally, we're putting away money that technically we could spend because mm -hmm. comfortable, but we're still putting away money in retirement. Totally. We're still putting away money in different investments totally. and different opportunities. And a shop. Yeah. So uh, a really great achievement that you've made here is that you're both on the same page because not every couple are oh. on the same page about this. <laughs> like the husband is saying, hey, we've got to cut corners here and she's trying to do this or the other way around. Like, yeah. And so they're checking up on each other's bank accounts and credit cards and what have you. <laughs> How have you managed to get on the same page with thinking about money? Because it's a sore point in a lot of relationships. Oh, geez. Because you're really generous. Yeah. <laughs> She's actually so more I'm, generous than so I am. So I have a gift of generosity. I, If I have money, I will like to give it away. I think about, I think about like, you know, everybody wants to imagine what they're going to do if they win the lottery. I love doing that. And then I realized none of it was towards me. And I, I love the thought of doing that stuff. So, but that's not a sore spot in our finances no. or in our marriage or anything. Um, but the reason why I responded that way is because I'm probably not going to be the most liked after this because uh, I did work and then we had the conversation and, and I came from a, my fa my mom was a stay at home mom after my little sister. So a little bit when I was younger, she worked and stuff, but um, so I basically come from a stay at home mom right. scenario. So I saw what that was. I, that's what I wanted. And that's also his story. His mom was a stay at home mom, although she did the family business and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but it looked different. And really, so it was just like our conversation on what we wanted our lives to look like. And so we wanted me to be able to stay home with the kids, mm -hmm. to have babies. Um, You've and, had four so far. Yes, yeah. we've had four so and far. And you want another three. I love having babies. <laughs> <laughs> if, but if we did have more babies, I wouldn't have an odd number. So okay. either two or four. <laughs> okay. But I love you having, I, or I do love having babies. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, I, so basically, so what that means though, is that I came out of the working world. So I stopped working after our third child and it was part-time right. with the other ones, right. but I swallowed that pill of like, okay, I, I'm like me as an individual in this culture, I had to swallow a pill of like, okay, I'm not bringing in income. Don't get, I don't, you need, don't need to talk to me about what my value is. Like I understand in the home and all that kind of stuff. But that means that I respect though, in a different way the dollars that come in because right. I'm not making them. It's right. his work. It's his right. sweat. It's his mind, all of that stuff. And so I want to respect him. And so when he said that, I said, cool. Like if he want, if that's what he want to do, mm -hmm. I'll call, I'll talk to him about it and mm -hmm. stuff. I'll be like, are you sure? Like, you know, like, but it, at the end of the day, like I trust him. Right. Um, and so, uh, I, I submitted to him in that way. Um, but also, like, he's respectful enough to me mm -hmm. uh, as his wife to include me in the conversation, to ask me about things, to also, like, when I say, like, <laughs> when I go to him and I'm like, I need money to be generous because I feel myself dying in a way. Yeah. And he's like, mm -hmm. and then he'll give me, uh, which sounds like so, like, you know, ball and chain, but it's really not. <laughs> because I can also, like, I have, I I can do whatever I want with my yeah, money. I know sure, that. Sure. Um, but interestingly enough, also my dad, uh, he has a saying that he'll say to my mom, which is kind of mean, but also funny. And she's fine about it too. But he says, um, your money is your money, but my money is our money. And so, and so, uh, so yeah, so I know it's like our money and it's right. going towards our vision. It's not right. just me. So I don't want to be selfish. I'm not going to be needy. And quite honestly, for my personality also, I tell him he's lucky because I'm pretty minimal. I don't need a lot. I, I really have don't. to encourage her to go get some clothes. You have to? We haven't bought, we went years without buying clothes. Yeah. You guys are unusual. You realize this, don't you? I literally yeah. had somebody ask me today <laughs> if these pants are new or if I had them since high school. And it's on the very rare occasion that these are actually, I bought them for, you hear <laughs> okay. the sound that passes yeah, nice. on. I have clothes from yeah. high school still, so. Right. And you, you've come out of the construction industry, mm -hmm. Eli, so you're a hard worker. I mean, you've worked in difficult situations. How have you, uh, have you compared that with leading a church now? I like working with inanimate objects more. <laughs> right. It's right. just, it's a little bit different is yeah. um, people, when you're working with people, there is a level of unpredictability. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, which frankly, like if I'm working with an object, it's fairly simple. You know, you go out to this job, once you get the job, you bid it and all that stuff, but it's measure, 
cut, install, yeah. follow up. Hey, how's it brought? Everything going right. well. Right. When I'm working with people is, uh, I guess now, now that I think about it, you do have different buildings and different sides of buildings that you have to figure out. Um, and I've kind of, kind of adapted and brought my mind over to that, that the same way there's different types of people, there's different, different types of buildings or different yeah. types of people. Mm-hmm. Right. And you have to take a different approach to every single person. Right. Um, and that's what I've learned. And so with working with construction, I was kind of the people guy in our business that right. I was good with talking well, to the, the builders, the yeah. contractors. And there was a one negotiation where we were shorted like $40,000 and I was sitting across the room from the owner of the company and the constr- the contractor. And it was me, my dad and my oldest brother. And they're like going at it. Like, you know, this is that, and this is, this is wrong. And you know, you guys screwed up and it, it was, and I said, hold on a second. You guys have like video of all of the job site, right? We were working on a holiday and express. We were building that. I said, can we review that video and look at the timestamps to show that we were actually held up by this other company. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't our fault that the job was overdue. But I found my strength was kind of that mediator. Let's look at the facts. Mm -hmm. His strength is harmony. Let's kind of find Mm -hmm. a solution. And I think my strength was a... was was harmony. I don't wouldn't say it's it that right now anymore. I mean, I, yeah, they kind of morph. It kind of, but I had to learn that in that mm-hmm. season. Yeah, and uh, I remember this is a really wealthy dude. He remember he looked at me. He's like, I'm glad that you were here and we were able to resolve this. If you weren't here, your company wouldn't have gotten any money. Amazing. And I remember thinking of that moment. I'm like, okay, that just was common sense to me. Like, yes. let's just sit down, guys. Yeah. Can we just stop trying to? prove who's right and just let's just look at what happened and resolve from there. And so I found like with leading people, it's been, um, it's been hard because the same, you have those same conflicts, especially when it comes to the church life. I'm right. This person's wrong. Well, I'm right. This person's wrong. It's like, Mm -hmm. hold on guys. Like we're all on the same team here. Mm -hmm. And I think this is somewhere God's going to use at least us in the future, like us to realize we're on the same team. Yeah. And there's a spiritual battle going on. And the sooner we can put aside our differences, the sooner we can go after the real thing and the, the kingdom issues sure. and there's lost people. And, yeah. and But that's easier said than done. And I found that there's actually, there there's some success in that where you can help people resolve some things, but then there's some where it's just, there's a falling out. Yeah, which is so unfortunate. But I find if you teach people the basics like discipleship and getting filled mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. then they've got power to actually yeah. do the the reconciliation, to say I'm sorry or forgive. to say I forgive you or to say, yeah, I'm going to make those adjustments. But when you when you haven't made a commitment to Christ to follow him and to be obedient to his ways or you haven't been empowered by the Holy Spirit, you find all those things are, are just beyond our reach. They're, mm-hmm. they're too difficult for us as mere you know, humans. We need the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. One of the great things I've enjoyed about our developing relationship with you guys is feeling like we are on the same page about expanding the kingdom of mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. and and not just religion, not just churches, mm-hmm. because we're, we're planning like 45 churches in the next year. Amen. It may be up to 60. We're going to have this global family gathering in Singapore Excited. in May next mm-hmm. year, which we would love to invite all the people who are listening in. To, to come to or uh, mm-hmm. at least uh, send in a registration or inquire about it. And our vision is to not just plant churches, but expand the kingdom of God, which mm-hmm. is a way of life mm-hmm. that Jesus outlined in those three chapters in the Sermon on the Mount, and that help you pretty well find your way through every situation mm-hmm. in life, no matter what comes along. And so the more we can have people like yourselves who are kind of saying, yeah, let's do this, and make it happen, the more we'll get it happening. Mm-hmm. Because trying to do it on our own, mm-hmm. yeah. we we halve, we we decimate our possibilities. Mm-hmm. But once you're starting to do things together, mm-hmm. as we are in C3, right across the globe, and as we come together in May, it's going to be so good to get that sense of united vision. Mm-hmm. Together, we can accomplish so much more. Like in comparison, it is, it, there is no comparison what one individual achieved running his church compared to what a hundred individuals mm-hmm. who band together right. with their resources, their vision, their encouragement. And uh, I'm looking forward to the future with you guys. It's uh, Likewise. It's been great so far. Amen. And Amen. Uh, Amen. I believe we're going to see the kingdom of God expanded to the maximum with, uh, with our unity in Jesus' name. 
Thank you. Amen. Thank you.